It was a great trip south from Madrid and then to Granada shown in two previous videos. And we're now going from Granada to Gibraltar via Spain's amazing Costa del Sol and on to Tangiers in Morocco. A quick meal stop just south of Granada allowed you to think of all the great things ahead of it and plan some optional nights out at Lisbon further down the track suggested by our great tour guide. As you can see we were enjoying those great straight off the trail olive from the olive groves. About payment, can I just explain about payment before I answer some more questions? I mean we understand a lot of these uh, prices like the Sintra excursion these are official prices fixed by the local agencies and never much interested in Turkish lira. <laughs> I mean all right that's not the only reason but that could be one reason and you say something everybody likes inside excursions of course I explained you about the system of a Portuguese dinner entertainment we're going to take you to typical uh, Portuguese taverna restaurant see they're not giving out <laughs> the visas to our Australian friends anymore here in Spain. Uh, all the uh, holiday makers, including the sheiks, you ever heard about uh, in Mabella. This is why this is the airport here. And all these typical Mediterranean plants we've seen before, the cypresses and the magnolias. Well, you know, here's the girl, you know, they didn't do it necessarily care so much in Europe but also from abroad and they were encouraged to come and buy a cheap it's too much yeah. spend the holiday in summer go down on the beach go swimming go on, out on a yacht so now ladies you know where we need to go to get a free cartier yeah finally we've made it to the playa see playa means beach okay it says on the right regalos banana over there, yes, as I said, the name of the Persian lilac media. That's what it means. Crowded, pebbly beaches and the flat sea didn't appeal at all to any of the sport Australians on the coach. But it was sunny and warm. And to anyone from Northern Europe, it was wonderful. I don't have to go to work today, so that's why they come here. I mean, all right, there are some of the youngsters eventually would go. Made a little more elegant, going up to Mijas. Hotel, the pool, and then the As the tour guide said, the beachfront was really for the masses, looking for sun and fun. So this was a short visit to, to the beach of uh, Torre Molinos, which is the first uh, seaside resort just next to Malaga. Malaga again, for a uh, tourist, with the exception of the uh, Alcazaba fortress, more than 20 years ago on the Costa del Sol and three years ago I was glad I wasn't there then. Who is going to take it to a far more elegant resort loved by the wealthier Spaniards called Mijas higher up in the mountains. It was wonderful as you will see. We don't need blue because of the azure blue water all around the Italian Peninsula. Maritime mountains, once called Mijas, Monte Mijas, the Mijas mountains, that's where we're getting the name, to Mijas, which is already coming up inside, straight ahead of us. There's some typical Spanish style of Andalusia, here with the iron blue balconies, very classical. Look at them here on the right hand side, cafes, shops, oh yes, your ladies, always get some souvenirs here. Right, look here on the right, you can hire a horse buggy, look at that. Yes, you know, all you need to do is fix the price before, you know, tell them how long you want to go, half an hour, you know, well, all right. 
trying to get your assignment as quick as possible. So look here, this is the administration center, city hall, a couple of shops here, you're walking along. Se vende información, it says. Our tour guide was right. Miha was a delightful spot. A hotel even had this lovely bowling green. And although it had a great view of the sea, way, way below, it was quiet and peaceful and a true delight, as we will see later. And the sun was out and it was beautifully warm. The perfect place to wind down for a while. Viewing Garola way down below us must be a mecca for the sun and sand and sea lovers, but frankly, I enjoyed the view of it from way up on top far more. Our Hotel Bichas was beautiful, the perfect place to chill out for a while after our quite hectic time the day before in wonderful Granada. Pretty clearly, there was plenty to do here if you really wanted to, but it had that lovely feel of having time to enjoy it. Like a quiet browse around town, or a leisurely ride in a horse and cart, or even a donkey ride. As the tour guide said, the beachfront was really for the masses looking for sun and fun. Mijas was perfect to just quietly stroll around and stretch our legs after quite a long time on the coach. True blitz, but with wonderful memories running through our minds of that beautiful singing and dancing we had enjoyed in exciting Granada only the day before. And although high above the coast Everywhere one walked, there seemed to be a delightful view down to the big blue Mediterranean. Plus, a perfect view of the Maritime Alps rising above us. The donkeys were all lined up in a row, a bit like a cab rank, waiting for passengers. Looking around town, there were some very elegant and quite large homes. I guess some of them would be holiday bolt holes for wealthy Spaniards living in the cities just behind the Maritime Alps. And with the beach so close by if they really wanted it. Things did seem to be a bit livelier at this plaza and lookout point, and the view was superb, even if it was a bit of a concrete jungle fronting the Mediterranean, it was still the Mediterranean. The town of Fungarola below us, and its artificial harbour, to shelter the many small boats there, with which to frolic on the sea, and the beautiful blue. Like so many other places in this so strongly Catholic country, the lookout at Miha had its own special little chapel, where its devout citizens and visitors could pay homage.
Good to see that the donkeys were now being well patronised. And this delightful horse and carriage would be well used too. But the cab rank did seem to be a little bit quiet here, although the horses seem to be enjoying the break. It was quite a large plaza in the centre of town. And above it was a long uphill walk to a little chapel on the mountainside. I guess it would take some pretty dedicated Christians to walk right up there. And even more so to stagger back downhill to get back to town. Keen cyclists too. But this seemed far more leisurely, and probably more enjoyable. They did create a little bit of a traffic jam though, but it's good to see that doggies and pedestrians do have right of way. This part of the town seemed to have much denser living, probably providing more affordable accommodation, but still with magnificent views in the light of Mijas. Ah, how tranquil it is here, up and away from that busy Costa del Sol way down below. The road into town was certainly steep and quite a climb from the coast. And they keep on coming, so Mihas must have something that the coast doesn't have. And having had a wonderful relaxed day here, I think I understand what it is. Bullfighting is still strongly supported in Spain, and this seems to be the local bull ring, but apparently nothing was happening there today in the local Plaza de Torres, but they offered a poster for you to take home in three languages with your name printed on it. And here was the local liquor store with free tastings. It had been a delightful stop over me has, but now, sadly, it's time to go. Big, ladies and gentlemen, a long one. See, we have some easy or nine local time. So you see, gaining two hours, a little extensive. Thank you very much. No, we just tried. Decided to keep on the seat. Sure that we get things are ready for us once we're there. All right, so could we do it then in face? Yeah, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely car, but... That's where we'll be sitting in the van. Huh? That's it. That's the end of it.
So, 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 we could uh, just go down. <laughs> Another time I've seen the yacht of, uh, from, <laughs> from England, so that I don't expect it to be here. <laughs> the mountains of Ronda. See, they're mixing their own We now have a stop at Sabalinas Park where we buy our tickets to cross by ship between the Spanish port of Algeciras close to Gibraltar to take us to Tangier, the entry point to Morocco. While we waited, this gave us the chance to have a look at the beach and, as you can see, no self-respecting Australian would even stand on it, let alone surf from it, even if there was some surf to surf in. It was stony, but in its own way quite picturesque, with the local fishing boats up in the same direction very stony shingles and frankly quite hard to walk on underfoot but it was good to see that the beach was being used by the local fishermen apparently to good purpose because we were told that good catches of sardines were available offshore in addition to other quite good table fish and the fishing boats and the maritime alps behind the town made the beach look quite picturesque in its own way which did give the beach some sense of purpose and certainly the local fishermen were making good use of it it seems it was quite a long wait while the tickets were being issued but it was a nice chance to stretch our legs on this rather long day on the road about 10 minutes away right? oh well there will be I'll just see it that you uh, Hello, don't miss the view to the Gibraltar Rock from here, yeah? Isn't it? In Madrid, he says, Rolex are with us. And let's get a real Rolex, maybe in Switzerland, to the border. Able to get the control over Gibraltar in 1704, during the war of Spanish succession, 1704. Yeah. And since then, the British uh, kept it as a colony. Remember that later the Battle of Trafalgar, and they wouldn't take them. So, so if you get Gibraltar coins, tell them, please, give me an English coin. <laughs> uh, recommended by Insight, they would also accept personal checks. It's on the main street. Yeah. So if we go around the corner. No. Yeah. To the corner. You see today, so we don't see it too well, but it's just about 15 kilometers from here. We're going to do well, of course, we also see the Moorish Castle. See the Moorish Castle there? Yes, yeah. Remember that uh, was built by the uh, man of uh, General Tariq. <laughs> There was no room for our large coach in the very crowded Gibraltar. So once we drove across the airstrip, we had to leave our large coach and board some mini buses in which we would tour Gibraltar and up to the top of the rock itself. There's a lot of plane coming in tonight. It's starting a big neighbor exercise here. Netherlands, yeah, lots of stop there. Fifty <laughs> troops, Canadian, Australian, Germans, Italian. And there is Africa, only about ten miles across the narrow straits of Gibraltar 
from Gibraltar itself. And this is the port of Algeciras in Spain, from which we will depart shortly to go across to Morocco. It sure is a narrow waterway into the huge expanse of the Mediterranean and all the countries on its shore, depending on the Straits of Gibraltar, for their access to the Atlantic Ocean and beyond. This shot pans from Africa on one side to Spain on the other. It sure is a narrow entrance to such a huge body of water. We now reboard our mini coaches to climb the rock with a rather loquacious English driver. Wellington, a complete battalion went away from Europe. The there are 150 planes. With the signal station on top of the Royal Navy, they control the million percent. With a garage, including. And last year, before Christmas, we have Mr. Bush. He came on a lovely job with all the family, and he had a party here with the army. Right. Costing 22 million pounds. The Danish are spending 100 million pounds in Europe. You know, it's on your friend. The casino is belong to a British millionaire. Now we're going a thousand feet level of the sea. Australians and Americans, and you see the priest on the Nissan hat. Uh, telling you the truth, I will go to confess. Friends in Spain, in Madrid, and since he loses job in Spain, he's a happy back. But now you give a kid 20 pounds and say that. That's a Navy base, complete empty. So the, dark, the sun having got a crown, a lot. She stayed for a day and then she went to Granada to see La Lampra. After a rather complex geological past, the rock of Gibraltar has much older limestone, so you can above much younger rock below. The limestone at the top of the rock has an extensive labyrinth of caves, with many having been formed naturally way, way, way back in time, and inhabited by prehistoric man, and others excavated to provide refuge for residents and soldiers during centuries of warfare in more recent times. Music now being played for us showed the good acoustic qualities of the caves, which were often enjoyed by concert audiences in recent years. Including Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh during a special visit they made here in 1954. In recognition of the Moorish castle, prehistoric man 6,000 years before Christ, and also the great siege tunnels used as havens for centuries. The caves of Gibraltar are also a UNESCO registered nature reserve. So they all got names. And the army, the Royal Air Force, taking good care of them. They spend a thousand pounds every week on fruit for them. Oh. Eh? They don't go to doctors, only when they need an operation, they take it straight to the military hospital. Hello, Mr. Bush. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bush. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Mr. Bush. He's looking for sweet. I ain't got no sweet. I forget to bring some sweet. For oh, we have all the cues. See one of the monkeys over there? He's got some here that belongs. On top of the... Legend has it that while ever the Barbary apes remain on the rock of Gibraltar, it will remain British. So the apes are well looked after and are also a highly regarded tourist attraction. No. <laughs> For me. Oh. Good push. Thank you very much. All these they come from Sabu. The men and women are not together. In Spain you have it together. And they have babies too. There, it's bad. Down to town by step. <laughs> Telephone, 9X. Yeah. The American company. Yeah. English and Spanish on school. Yeah. Yeah. 
Even in the army, they bring the kids here and they learn Spanish here on the road. They people here. Yeah. Banks, we got English Bank, Lloyds Bank, Hong Kong Bank, Netherlands Banks, and they have a hockey pitch on the bottom. The Navy here, the museum on your right. Here we have the Mercedes car, Austin, Morris, and Rover. And here we have the police station. They, they put poppy here to the Americans and the British. We have a government for the army here. Hope everybody's happy, nice and safe, everybody. Back in town, I visited an acquaintance who had an office of one of the highest buildings in town and was able to get some good shots of the commercial part of Gibraltar, the city centre and the very cramped conditions in which his residents live. But as a duty-free port, quite a high standard of living and a good climate and above all, the residents all being citizens of Britain I couldn't find anybody who really wanted to leave. This is a small but rather nice city centre with a nice selection of shops, restaurants and community services available there. Small but pretty effective. to you but uh, let's expect that uh, sometimes I'm not able to of course we have local guides remember then in phase is not okay goodbye to South Africa of course right yeah, there's a lot of food brought over there rubbish yeah. Yeah. Remember again, this is where we are to meet when we get into the board of paintings. It looks like they're doing very nicely on the time because uh, whenever they are if And it's now Hello Africa as we approach Tangier on the northwestern tip of Morocco. It's now into the late summer twilight after a very long day and we're keenly looking forward to getting to our hotel to have a sleep and our start to enjoy the wonders of Tangiers and the rest of Morocco starting tomorrow.
Even the cats seem to have abandoned the ship and was headed for good sleep somewhere else, like us. The day started quietly enough, but we were soon to learn that Morocco, and especially Tangiers, is not a quite peaceful place. It looks right now, gazing out across these rooftops, and we had yet to meet the street vendors. down through the Medina. Remember we visit Forbes. Everybody remembers Alan Forbes, right? For more than a century, Tangiers has been a mecca for wealthy expatriates who found living there, and the Mediterranean climate especially, very much to their liking. Across the bay from the port is the wealthy part of Tangiers, and it is a pretty good way of life here in this new housing estate where we see new homes being built on the built-up land, giving a good view of the port. What's the population? About 27 million. Different nationalities, but obviously then uh, with one administration. So this was the French section. Again, a panoramic view down onto the port. For the working class people down below next to the Medina. <laughs> Amongst some notable billionaires who chose to live here was Alan Forbes, who made his fortune publishing the Forbes magazine. He built a magnificent home on the clifftops just west of Tangiers where he indulged his passion for collection of a huge array of miniature soldiers, sailors and militaria which he set up in arrays representing the conduct of warfare throughout history and especially the critical events of famous wars of the past. His will 
left his magnificent home and all the treasures within it to his adopted country of Morocco and his home and his collection is now a magnet to visitors coming to Morocco. Alan Forbes had a magnificent view of all visitors arriving at Tangiers by sea and was rumoured to have kept pretty close tabs on who came and who went. I guess this was pretty important to his business empire and maybe even to friends back in America in both business and in government and perhaps the military too especially during the war years. He apparently bred some famous racehorses here too. It certainly was a beautiful home he had, and one can well understand why he wished to live in such a beautiful place. And every ship which passed into and out of the Mediterranean was clearly visible from his terrace. It was interesting to see Moroccan women herding goats just down below his old home too. <coughs> but it was now time to go and see more of wonderful ten years. valuable pieces of furniture, uh, eventually a few things. Have... And next, the amazing Casbah in the Medina. <laughs> Old Moorish fortifications from way back. This is still the Mediterranean coast. Casablanca, for example, also was found by the Portuguese who built the house there. Here by the way, she did get married four times. Barbara Hopkins. 
Kaaba and, uh, and the Kaftan, of course, you know, those classical clothes everybody is wearing. These boys seem to be rewinding a string line, which they have used to carry out some sort of measurement along the alleyway into the Medina. Well, that's all for now, folks. Please take a look at the rest of the superb Casper at Tangiers in my next video, now on YouTube and Leader, called Surviving the Sooks. It's great viewing. You'll enjoy it. So, that's the end of my video, Cotte del Sol. I hope you've enjoyed that great trip all the way from Granada to Tangiers. The Rock of Gibraltar. It will remain British. So the apes are well looked after and are also a highly regarded tourist attraction. Good push. Thank you very much. All this they come from Sebago. The men and women are not together. In Spain you have it together. And have babies too. There, it's bad. Down to town, by step. Telephone, 9X. Yeah. The American company. Yeah. English and Spanish on school. Yeah. Yeah. Even the army, they bring the kids here and they learn Spanish here on the road. The people here. Yeah. Banks, we got English bank, Lloyds bank, Hong Kong bank, Netherlands banks. And they have a hockey pitch on the bottom. The Navy, here at the museum on your right. Here we have the Mercedes car. Austin, Morris and Rover. And here we have the police station. <laughs> They put poppy here to the Americans and the British. We have a government for the army here. Hope everybody's happy, nice and safe. Everybody. Back in town, I visited an acquaintance who had an office of one of the highest buildings in town and was able to get some good shots of the commercial part of Gibraltar, the city centre and the very cramped conditions in which its residents live. But as a duty-free port, quite a high standard of living, and a good climate, and above all, the residents all being citizens of Britain, I couldn't find anybody who really wanted to leave. This is a small but rather nice city centre with a nice selection of shops, restaurants and community services available there. Small but pretty effective. Yeah.
Panorama here. This is still the Mediterranean course. Casablanca, for example, also was found by the Portuguese who built a house there. These boys seem to be rewinding a string line which they have used to carry out some sort of measurement along the alleyway into the Medina. Well, that's all for now, folks. Please take a look at the rest of the superb Casper at Tangiers in my next video, now on YouTube and Leader, called Surviving the Sooks. It's great viewing. You'll enjoy it. So, that's the end of my video, Cotter del Sol. I hope you've enjoyed that great trip all the way from Granada to Undertown. Made the beach look quite picturesque in its own way which did give the beach some sense of purpose and certainly the local fishermen were making good use of it it seems it was quite a long wait while the tickets were being issued but it was a nice chance to stretch our legs on this rather long day on the road about 10 minutes away right? it oh well that will be on just here that you recommended to me you to the Gibraltar Rock from here, yeah? Isn't it? In Madrid, he says, Oh, I like some huevos. Huh? And uh, let's get a real Rolex made in Switzerland uh, to the border. Able to uh, get uh, the control over Gibraltar in 1704 during the War of Spanish Succession. 1704. Yeah. And since then, the British uh, kept it as a colony. Remember that later the Battle of Trafalgar, and so they wouldn't take them. So, so if you get Gibraltar coins, tell them, please, give me an English coin. <laughs> uh, recommended by Insight, they would also accept personal checks. It's on the main street. Yeah. So if we go around the corner. No. Oh, you see today, so we don't see it too well, but it's just about uh, 15 kilometers from here. We're going to do well, of course, we also see the Moorish Castle. See the Moorish Castle there? Yes, yeah. Remember that uh, was built by the uh, man of uh, General Tariq. <laughs> There was no room for our large coach in the very crowd of Gibraltar. So once we drove across the airstrip, we had to leave our large coach and board some mini buses in which we would tour Gibraltar and up to the top of the rock itself. There's a lot of plane coming in tonight, starting a big naval exercise here. 
Netherlands. Yeah, well, let's get this out of there. Lots of stuff there. <laughs> uh, British troops, Canadian, Australian, Germans, Italian, Pol And there is Africa, only about 10 miles across the narrow straits of Gibraltar, from Gibraltar itself. Great trip south from Madrid and then to Granada, shown in two previous videos. And we're now going from Granada to Gibraltar, via Spain's amazing Costa del Sol, and on to Tangiers in Morocco. A quick meal stop just south of Granada allowed you to think of all the great things ahead of it and plan some optional nights out at Lisbon further down the track, suggested by our great tour guide. As you can see, we were enjoying those great straight off the tree olives from the olive groves. Uh, about payment, can I just explain about payment before I answer some more questions? I mean, you understand a lot of these uh, prices, like the Sintra excursion, these are official prices fixed by the local agencies and never much interested in Turkish lira. <laughs> I mean, all right, that's not the only reason, but that could be one reason. And you say something everybody likes. Inside excursions, of course, I explained you about the system of... A Portuguese dinner entertainment, we're going to take you to typical uh, Portuguese taverna restaurant. See, they're not giving out the visas to our Australian friends anymore here in Spain. Uh, all the uh, holiday makers, including the sheiks, you ever heard about them? Uh, in Marbella. This is why this is the airport here. And all these typical Mediterranean plants we've seen before, the cypresses and the magnolia as well. You know, years ago, you know, they didn't necessarily care so much in Europe, but also from abroad, and they were encouraged to come and buy a cheese. It's too much, yeah. Spend the holiday in summer. Go down on the beach, go swimming, go on, out on a yacht. So, now ladies, you know, where well, we need to go to get a free cartier. Yeah, finally we've made it to the playa. See, playa means beach. Okay, it says on the right, regalos, banana over there, yes, as I said, the name of the Persian lilac. Media, that's what it means. Crowded, pebbly beaches and the flat sea didn't appeal at all to any of the sport Australians on the coach. But it was sunny and warm. And to anyone from Northern Europe, it was wonderful. I don't have to go to work today, so that's why they come. I mean, all right, there are some of the youngsters eventually would go. Made a little more elegant, going up to Michas. Hotel the pool. Now, hello Africa. As we approach Tangier on the northwestern tip of Morocco. It's now into the late summer twilight after a very long day and we're keenly looking forward to getting to our hotel to have a sleep and our start to enjoy the wonders of Tangiers and the rest of Morocco starting tomorrow.
Even the cats seem to have abandoned ship and was headed for good sleep somewhere else. Like us. The day started quietly enough, but we were soon to learn that Morocco, and especially Tangiers, is not a quiet peaceful place. It looks right now gazing out across these rooftops, and we had yet to meet the street vendors. What's the population? About 27 million. Different nationalities, but obviously then uh, with one administration. So this was the French section. Again, a panoramic view down onto the port. See? For the working class people down below next to the Medina. <laughs> Amongst some notable billionaires who chose to live here was Alan Forbes, who made his fortune publishing the Forbes magazine. He built a magnificent home on the clifftops just west of Tangiers where he indulged his passion for collection of a huge array of miniature soldiers, sailors and militaria which he set up in arrays representing the conduct of warfare throughout history and especially the critical events of famous wars of the past. His will left his magnificent home and all the treasures within it to his adopted country of Morocco and his home and his collection is now a magnet to visitors coming to Morocco. <laughs> Alan Forbes had a magnificent view of all visitors arriving at Tangiers by sea and was rumoured to have kept pretty close tabs on who came and who went. I guess this was pretty important to his business empire and maybe even to friends back in America in both business and in government and perhaps the military too just behind the maritime Alps and with the beach so close by if they really wanted it
things did seem to be a bit livelier at this plaza and lookout point. And the view was superb, even if it was a bit of a concrete jungle fronting the Mediterranean. It was still the Mediterranean. The town of Fungarola below us and its artificial harbour to shelter the many small boats there with which to frolic on the sea and the beautiful blue. Like so many other places in this so strongly Catholic country, the lookout at Miha had its own special little chapel, where its devout citizens and visitors could pay homage. Good to see that the donkeys were now being well patronised and this delightful horse and carriage was being well used too. <laughs> but the cab rank did seem to be a little bit quiet here although the horses seem to be enjoying the break. It was quite a large plaza in the centre of town. And above it was a long uphill walk. To a little chapel on the mountainside. I guess it would. Trunks were there. All right. So could we do it then in face? That may be. Oh, yeah. It's a lovely, lovely car, but. That's where we'll be sitting in the van. Huh? That's it. That's the end of it. So. 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 Now you gotta go to work. Thought we could uh, just go down. <laughs> Another time I've seen the yacht of uh, from <laughs> from England, so that I don't expect it to be here. <laughs> the mountains of Ronda. See, they're mixing their own. See? It's society. It's We now have a stop at Sabalina's Park where we buy our tickets to cross by ship between the Spanish port of Algeciras, close to Gibraltar, to take us to Tangier, the entry point to Morocco. While we waited, this gave us the chance to have a look at the beach, and, as you can see, no self-respecting Australian would even stand on it let alone surf from it, even if there was some surf to surf in. It was stony, but in its own way quite picturesque, with the local fishing boats up on the sand correction. Very stony shingles, and frankly quite hard to walk on underfoot. But it was good to see that the beach was being used by the local fishermen, apparently to good purpose, because we were told that good catches of sardines were available offshore, in addition to other quite good table fish. And the fishing boats and the maritime alps behind the town made the beach look quite picturesque in its own way, which did give the beach some sense of purpose. And certainly the local fishermen were making good use of it, it seems. It was quite a long wait while the tickets were being issued, but it was a nice chance to stretch our legs on this rather long day on the road.
about 10 minutes away. Right? It takes, oh, well, that will be Al Jazeera, which uh, you recommend it to me. About 27 million different nationalities, but obviously then uh, with one administration. So this was the French section. Again, a panoramic view down onto the port. See? The working class people down below next to the Medina. Amongst some notable billionaires who chose to live here was Alan Forbes, who made his fortune publishing the Forbes magazine. He built a magnificent home on the clifftops, just west of Tangiers, where he indulged his passion for collection of a huge array of miniature soldiers, sailors and militaria, which he set up in arrays representing the conduct of warfare throughout history and especially the critical events of famous wars of the past. His will left his magnificent home and all the treasures within it to his adopted country of Morocco and his home and his collection is now a magnet to visitors coming to Morocco. Alan Forbes had a magnificent view of all visitors arriving at Tangiers by sea and was rumoured to keep pretty close tabs on who came and who went. I guess this was pretty important to his business empire and maybe even to friends back in America in both business and in government and perhaps the military too especially during the war years Like so many other places in this so strongly Catholic country, the lookout at Miha had its own special little chapel, where its devout citizens and visitors could pay homage. Good to see that the donkeys were now being well patronised and this delightful horse and carriage was being well used too. <laughs> but the cab rank did seem to be a little bit quiet here although the horses seem to be enjoying the break. It was quite a large plaza in the centre of town. And above it was a long uphill walk to a little chapel on the mountainside. I guess it would take some pretty dedicated Christians to walk right up there, and even more so to stake a back downhill to get back to town. <laughs> K 
keen cyclist too. But this seemed far more leisurely and probably more enjoyable. They did create a little bit of a traffic jam though, but it's good to see that doggies and pedestrians do have right of way. This part of town seemed to have much denser living, probably providing more affordable accommodation, but still with magnificent views in delightful Mijas. Ah, 